I'm Bertolt Kuletzko. I work as a professor of pediatrics at the University of Munich in Germany, and I would like to share some thoughts with you on how nutrition in early life programs long-term health. Nutrition during the first about 1,000 days of life between conception and the age of about two years is more important than nutrition at any, any other time of life, and that has to do with the very rapid growth and development during this early period of life. For example, in the last weeks of fetal life, the fetus doubles its body weight in no more than six weeks. Imagine if you were to match that growth weight, you would have to increase your body weight from the time of the Aspen Congress early in September with about 70 kilograms, for example, to about Christmas to 280 kilograms. And if we match that growth rate in the preterm infant ex utero, we need to provide 120 kilocalories per day per kilogram body weight, which would be in an adult of 70 kilograms, eight and a half thousand kilograms. Amazing. And it's not only this big substrate supply, it's also the very rapid growth and differentiation of babies during this period of life that was shown to program long-term health outcomes in response to nutritional uh, exposure. Um, this concept was first introduced in 1975 by Professor Günther Dörner from Berlin, who introduced the concept of programming. Um, it was substantiated by Professor Nick Hales and Professor David Barker in the UK, who did uh, studies on, based on retrospective epidemiology, linking measures at birth to long-term health. And first randomized clinical trials were introduced by Professor Alan Lucas. Today, we follow three key hypotheses. Hypothesis one is the fetal overnutrition hypothesis. In other words, if the mother is obese, if the mother have, has diabetes, she provides too much substrate to the fetus, there's rapid growth in utero, and that is predictive of later obesity and diabetes. With a randomized clinical trial that we have in the Early Nutrition Programming Project, funded by the EU in collaboration with Australian and US funding agencies, uh, the LIMIT trial has shown that nutritional intervention and behavioral intervention, improving physical activity in pregnancy can reduce the number of large for gestational age infants by more than 30%. So we can intervene. The second hypothesis is the rapid postnatal growth hypothesis or accelerated postnatal growth hypothesis, meaning that children who grow fast in the first or second year of life have an increased risk of later disease, including obesity and diabetes. Here again, RCT data from the Childhood Obesity Project show we have an opportunity for intervention. We can, by reducing protein intake in infancy with infant formula modification, we can reduce early growth rate and we can reduce the risk of later obesity more than twofold. And finally, there's a mismatch hypothesis if there's poor early growth matched by obesogenic environment later on with rapid growth postnatally there is um, a markedly increased risk. There's rapid progress in the scientific understanding of mechanisms, placental nutrient transfer, metabolic predictors, epigenetic modification of the genes, and we are now in a situation where we are able to develop practically applicable um, recommendations for diet in pregnancy and in early childhood that is not only having benefits on the short term, but it takes into account the long term health effects. So it is an exciting area of research with practical importance that is able to improve the population health. Thank you very much indeed for your attention.